Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 369 of the RV podcast. And this week we meet an RV newbie couple, total newbies. Their first year, total disaster. But the good news is they didn't give up. Welcome, fellow travelers. It's time for another episode of the RV Podcast. Answering your questions, sharing tips, suggesting great trips and off the beaten path adventures, and always staying on top of the RV lifestyle news you need to know about with great interviews and inside industry information. Here's your hosts, award winning journalists Mike and Jennifer Wendland. Hello, everybody. I'm Mike Wendland. And this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer. Hello, Michael. Well, here we go. It is now November 2021 as Ooh. this episode is being released. Where did this year go? Time is going by faster and faster. I think it does. <laughs> I mean, not really, but it sure seems like <laughs> it, it seems doesn't like it. A um, couple of things with November that we should remind you one. Uh, in most parts of the country, it either is right now or it very soon will be firearm deer season. That means a lot of hunters in the woods and the woods is one place, particularly now with everybody boondocking that a lot of RVers like to go. So be careful out there. Uh, be aware that there are hunters out there. Um, give them a wide berth, right? Right, and if you have a dog, keep your dog on a leash. Don't let your dog run free. And try to wear the bright colors that, so that people can see you, even that, your dog. That hunter orange, yeah, they have vests for your dog. Right. So You just, want to make a lot of noise. You want to not surprise anybody. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I mean, most hunters are great, but uh, you don't want anybody to mistake your dog or you. I've always deer. worried about our dog, a Norwegian elk hound, because his tail curls up and it's white. We were on we, the underside, so we always worry about our bow. We take a hike with Bo every morning, and uh, I was out on some state land, a big track that we like to hike him the other day, and I noticed that little white tail, you yeah. know, and it's white-tailed deer. Well, it's archery season. It hadn't been firearm season up here in this part of Michigan yet, but in fact, we did see where somebody had gotten a deer, looked like the day before they had left the the gut pile, that's what it was. We were hiking with Bo and a bunch of friends and other dogs, all the dogs, we had to grab the dogs. Dogs thought it was out. great. <laughs> so anyway, just for whatever it's worth, if you're out hiking in November in the woods, it's deer season. Time but to wear that bright orange and make a lot of noise. Make some noise, yep. Uh, for the hunters, not necessarily the wildlife. And what else happens in November in most of the northern oh, places? The, what I don't like is when you have to winterize. I was counting on my fingers thinking, how many months do we have to winterize? Yeah. It always makes me sad when we winterize, well, but it's something that has to be done. We probably winterize for shorter periods of time than most RVers mm -hmm. because we camp every every month of the year. But I think we're going to probably winterize this month, this week, yeah, actually, this week. as this podcast comes out. I know we can still do short camping excursions using uh, antifreeze to... Uh, flush the toilet, so that's good. We, we can still go. Yep, and uh, you know, just winterize it. And everybody asks, we're gonna probably do a whole program on this coming up soon, but when do you winterize? Well, when the temperature gets considerably below 32 degrees Fahrenheit for a prolonged period of time. Isn't five, it like, six, yeah, five, five, six hours. Five, six hours. And if the temperature is warming up consistently in the daytime, well above freezing, you know, it's not a critical thing for you to uh, to winterize, but it's telling you that the time is very close. We're there. It's going to get down the 20s one night for a couple hours this week. That's the forecast. So might as well do it this week. We, we think we have some time. So that's our plans. Um, and it's also almost the holiday season. Woo! Yeah. It is. May I suggest our new merch for your <laughs> holiday uh, gift giving? We've added lots of new items, our new logo. Uh, these are really nice, these warm hoodies. Uh, we've got them in many different designs uh, that celebrate the RV lifestyle. And uh, the beauty is, is you can get them. <laughs> There's no parts shortage with our merch. And we'll put a link in the show notes and uh, in the description below. Just go to, uh, if you wanna just remember it, it's easy, just rvlifestyle.com slash merch and you'll, you'll find this. Well, we had, uh, before we get to our interview of the week, which is coming up in just a couple minutes, we had a lot of reaction to um, the email that we read last week from one of our 
followers who was talking about uh, visiting a Texas RV show. And remember, you know, did Eric, up. how could I forget? He just said that he saw a lot of people that were extremely obese, that yeah. could barely walk. And he wondered if the RV lifestyle contributed to that. And, and he was pretty blunt about it. I read his note. And, uh, and he used some pretty strong terms to describe it, but he was talking about, he's never saw so many 400 pound plus people out there. And uh, he just was saying, it's just, you know, what's the matter? I mean, what's going on? It's part of a national obesity epidemic. We all know that, right? So we had a lot of reaction to that. And I would say by six to one, seven to one, it was very, uh, much in agreement with what the writer wrote. And um, I, I, I've got some of them, I was going to read them all, but you know, basically they all agreed with this guy, but, but one. And in the interest of fairness, I'm going to read it. I'll read most of it. It's a long one, but, um, but I'm going to read it anyway, because uh, just as the other person had their say, so is this. It says, hey, Mike and Jennifer, uh, it was headlined, by the way, shame on you. <laughs> Hi, Mike and Jennifer. On last week's podcast, you happily, I don't know if I would say it was happily, but you happily read an email from a listener whose subject matter was how many obese people attended the RV show that this listener had also attended. Well, I'd like to offer an alternate perspective on this matter. We'll let you. Your email was quick to point out on how so many fat people attended the show, how they were waddling around and making fun of the way they walked. I... Even going so, and even going so far as to call them grotesque. He had so much to say about other people's health and body types. Well, please allow me to offer this opinion. I am both an avid RV or camper and hiker, and I weigh in at about 290 pounds. I'm five foot 11, which makes me quite stout. My wife is also a larger woman, and I would like to ask the following question. Since when has it become socially acceptable to fat shame and body shame others? Referring to obese people as a plague is not only wrong, but quite offensive. If your emailer had mentioned how many black people or how many people wearing gay pride rainbows were there and proceeded to make fun of that, well, yeah, I don't think that's a fair analogy. But anyway, he says, but when it comes to body shaming and fat shaming, it seems to be perfectly okay. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not. I am a hardworking, taxpaying, fast food eating, overweight American and happy as such. I don't see myself as morbidly obese, fat, or in some way less of a person because of my size. Just because I don't eat lettuce, drink kale smoothies, and work out five days a week doesn't make me any less of a person or less deserving respect. Acting as if you're better or somehow more worthy is uh, because of your body shape is uh, part of the problem. I'm fat and happy, and I'll thank such fat shamers to keep their entitled opinions to themselves. And this is sent from somebody named Chris. Okay, Chris, you had your say. And, I, and we're not going to raise this again, other than the fact to say, Chris, um, we heard you, okay? But um, I think that the, the original callers and everybody else's reaction is still pretty strong. We have an epidemic, a plague of obesity. And Chris, if you want to close your eyes to that, go right, go right ahead. It is unhealthy, and it is, it is not good for our, our country. If I can just say, one of our children is a surgeon, and just simply for your own health, if you need surgery, it is so much more difficult, it's harder, You're, the health risk of being overweight and needing surgery is reason enough to, to try to cut out some of that fast food and eat some lettuce with vinegar and oil on it. And I've, like been very, I've been very fortunate that I can pretty much eat what I want, except uh, now I've got some other things in my life that things have been taken away from me, uh, caffeine and uh, things like that. But um, I, I fight Mike weight all the time. Has, yeah, you've yeah, and, battled forever. So, uh, and I, I am ashamed of being overweight. So I'm just telling you, it's it's not good. <laughs> I think you if you could probably weigh 500 pounds easily, easily if, if uh, I didn't really work on it. it. I still weigh way too much. Okay, but okay. enough of that. We we did treat both sides, and I think the larger point is that there is something to the RV lifestyle that contributes to that. People feel that they're always on vacation. I was going to say you feel like you're on vacation. You don't get as much exercise if you get any at all, um, and you tend to eat. Uh, Many people tend to eat unhealthy food. And, and I think 
can we all agree that it's better as a nation if, if for our health care if uh, and and for our families if we were more healthy and the most important thing to health these days doctors tell us is is diet and uh, and exercise all right we will never talk about this again at least not for the immediate future but uh, I thank you Chris for sending that alternate opinion in uh, we, we respect your, your thoughts and we respect everybody else. And thank you all for weighing in on that question. We love to get your comments when we talk about stuff. So there, uh, enough of that. Uh, we do have, here's some good news. I mentioned uh, our merch and the holiday shopping. We can really kickstart that. We just started a new sweepstakes this uh, past Sunday on our Ask Us Anything show that we do on YouTube. And we're giving away a $500 gift certificate to Ooh. Camping World. That you is can, awesome. You can order online, 500 bucks, and uh, we will run the sweepstakes for two months, or two weeks, pardon me, <laughs> two weeks, and then we'll announce a winner. So even before Black Friday, the winner will have the $500 certificate, good for any online purchases or any in-store. 500 bucks, that's a great thing for an RVer. So uh, we'll put a link in the description in the show notes how you can enter it. It's free to enter. Enter as many times as you want. Uh, basically, you just go to rvlifestyle.com slash sweepstakes, and you can enter that contest for $500. All right. That's well, awesome. When we come back, we will have the interview of the week. You're not going to want to miss it. A newbie couple shares the newbie disasters <laughs> that that first year of RVing brought them. Stay with us. When we're on a road trip, we always seem to find a way to stop at a Camping World Center. There are over 225 Camping World locations across the country, and there's always one close by when we need parts and accessories for our RV or just want to shop. In fact, uh, we have so much fun with uh, Camping World, and as we talk about it as one of our sponsors, they have agreed to offer a 10% discount if you use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you buy $99 or more in merchandise. You'll find everything you want from outdoor furniture and appliances, the ones you see us use in our videos and that we talk about here in the podcast. RV extras that include everything from camping chairs to fire pits, electrical accessories, must-have gadgets. Check them all out. And again, don't forget, use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you visit CampingWorld.com. Whether you're staying close to home or wheeling across the country, RVers need the best value in medical coverage. Peace of Mind for RVs.com has a Medicare enrollment specialist with 16 years of experience and can tailor your Medicare plan selection with the choices that matter most to you. So you can keep your doctors and make sure your prescriptions and medical care are covered wherever you travel. Peace of Mind for RVs.com will help you get the most out of your Medicare coverage, choose just the right options, and they can even get you squared away with all the things that Medicare may not cover, like specialized emergency transportation coverage, air ambulance coverage, dental, vision, hearing, all at the best bang for the buck and tailored specifically for the RV lifestyle. You can find out more and get all your questions answered by going to peaceofmindforrvs.com. That's peaceofmindforrvs.com. Welcome back, everybody. This is the interview of the week, and our topic this week is um, RB newbies, total newbies, total disaster. <laughs> and it, it arises from the, the comments that our interviewees had in uh, what you're going to meet him in, when you're going to meet him in just a second. John and Joanne Neely from Georgia. I, we had the pleasure of meeting them in Natchez, and... Uh, what a, what a nice couple. Sticking yep. with it when all these things kept going wrong. You know, when you see all these ads for the RV lifestyle, you see all these people that everything goes right and they're in the perfect spots and the RVs work flawlessly and they know how to solve any problem. Well, the reality is, as anybody who's been an RVer knows, is completely different than, than that idyllic portrait. But John and Joanne were a delight. They were at our meetup on the Mississippi that we had with our supporters a few weeks ago in Natchez, Mississippi. And uh, we sat at the picnic table outside their RV. And uh, we can't wait to introduce you to these total newbies who share with brutal honesty the total disaster that they had. 
you guys are total newbies. <laughs> right. Much. I mean, total newbies, right? Right. Pretty much. This Pleasure Way is your first ever RV. Right. So the first question is, is how did you decide to do this? And um, what's it been like? <laughs> uh, it was COVID. We had like 60 cruises that we've done. We've done a couple of three week road trips in the last few years since we retired that we loved. COVID hit, we didn't feel safe going into a hotel, stopping anywhere to use the restroom. And we thought, hey, an <laughs> RV has a clean bed, uh, its own bathroom, you can cook your own food. It's and gonna- it's easy and carefree. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> and you bought this Pleasure Way Plateau TS uh, you must have shopped really hard for it. Uh, we just got lucky. I read about it on RV Trader one Saturday afternoon at 3.30, called the dealer that happened to be in the Atlanta area that had it, and said, we can be there in like 35 minutes. He said, we're open till five. We put a $5,000 down payment on it and went back Monday and spent time looking at it. But Mike, there's more to that story because before that, she mentioned all the things with COVID and we, we were used to be going to Disney, we'd have annual passes, we'd go to Universal, we'd go on all these trips to the national parks. And then when COVID hit, she really started looking, how can we continue to do that without having to risk, you know, being exposed Sick, to COVID? Yeah. So we started doing, she did do a lot of research on the internet, found your show and we had kind of one in mind and then we had to switch because they couldn't deliver. You want to yeah, tell a little more about yeah, that? It was, we had a Wonder rear twin bed on order and our dealer only got so many allocations um, and we put $5,000 on it in July 2020 for delivery in February 21. Couldn't make it, moved it to May, moved it to July and in July we thought you know we're running out of time from a health we're, we're gonna die before you deliver <laughs> <Yes>. that <laughs> so they gave us the money back uh, but only after we found this one and this was probably our second choice uh, but we thought it was too small and it is too small a little a little not too bad we're getting used to it yeah but we didn't feel like we really had a choice so what has these first few months <laughs> Has total newbies been like? Awful. <laughs> You're not supposed to say that. It's supposed to be, this was great, it was worth every cent. It was great, it was worth every cent, but it was challenging. It was challenging. <laughs> that, that's the word, challenging. Okay. Adding out my terrible. Yeah. Um, we had problems, not with the pleasure way whatsoever, but we had so many problems occur in the first few weeks, it, it made me scared to go anywhere. Like what? Well, uh, the first couple of times we only went overnight to a Corps of Engineer site that was like 12 miles from where we store the RV. We took no baby problems. steps in learning <laughs> these skills. That's, that's yeah. smart. And we, and we tried to level, and we had lots of problems leveling because <laughs> Corps of Engineers, engineers don't want something flat, they want the water to drain yeah. up the lots. <laughs> so we were never level, so we had to learn leveling. And the first big trip we went but to- But wait, you did learn leveling. Well, we did, yeah. we did. Okay. And then the- One day we got it down with two hours. We were <laughs> <laughs> level under two hours. Two hours? <laughs> It okay. was like three or four degrees off. <laughs> so, so then we went on our quote first big trip up to Biltmore to Asheville and we got like 25, 30 miles out of Atlanta and the, um, uh, tire, pressure the tire pressure monitoring system that we had paid extra for and we had as an add-on went off and we thought oh thank heavens we have this because we have a flat we could have been killed or something but we had this yeah. system and it stopped yeah. us That's well good. by the four hours later when uh good <laughs> sam got there they said the stem is broken and all the air went out your tire is fine and and maybe it was because you had this tire monitor thing attached to the stem it broke the stem and we said okay and he said get metal stems and then we went back to the dealer and he couldn't put on metal stems for some reason on these uh. tires. So then we thought, okay, once in a lifetime experience, we're gonna go to Asheville again. We start out again and maybe 20 miles beyond where we broke down the first time, same thing happened. 
That time it took six hours because it was a Sunday <laughs> for Good Sam to get there because they were in Gainesville, Georgia, and we were on our way to Biltmore. Oh. And um, so by that point, I was really frustrated. So we went back to the dealer and they said, just take them off. And I didn't feel comfortable with that. So we got to be good friends with the you know, tire monitor system, the company the that manufacturer. manufacturing. And they said, get the ones that are banded. That inside are the tire. Inside the tire. And then we had to go to like three tire dealers that were willing to do that. We finally found one that was willing to do it and acted as if they knew what they were doing. <laughs> and so uh, we haven't had a problem with the tire going flat again but we did have problems the very next time with it turned very cold and so the tire system monitoring all went off alarming scaring us half to death because you know the tire had warmed up enough and there was not enough air so then probably the fifth tire dealer which we were near that time <laughs> said, <laughs> said just put more air in put yeah. about five pounds beyond said, what it says they said take it up to the max if it says 80 psi on the tire take it up to 80 and but it did we asked the tpm the tire pressure man manufacturer they and they no. said we really can't make a recommendation that choice is you so we yeah. didn't know we went five do. pounds more than what it says on the door so how's it working now well now it's fine it goes off but we know it's going to go on but it's just a, off. it's just it just says yes. sensor failure uh, no, it ju it says that there's not enough low air? low pressure. Oh, but really? But then as soon as it warms up, it's yeah. up to we run where for it should five be. miles. It's fine. Okay. So, so you've learned the lesson. <laughs> yes. How to level. <laughs> yes. And now you've learned not to sweat the hard yes. stuff with the tires. Yes. What else happened? <laughs> well, we clogged up the commode twice. You clogged the commode. <laughs> twice yeah. with too much paper and not enough water. We did learn that you do need to use more water than what you would use in your home, but we didn't know that. Flush often. And we yeah. found a YouTube video. Now, I, I have a master's degree in library science and an MBA, but the library science, I do a lot of research. And so we found a YouTube video, and they said, go to Lowe's, buy this little yellow package. It's a very thin auger, and it's safe for your RV. And that worked. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, and we had to use it twice. And in the meantime, what she's not telling you, Mike, is she would she would read all this stuff on the Internet, and she'd be confused, and I would too. And she'd say, I'm going to call Mike. And we'll say, well, they do ask Mike every Sunday. I'm huh? Jana. So, like, she's Jana. <laughs> She's sending you questions under a false name. Oh, so. no, no, my, do my granddaughters <laughs> call me Jana. Did I answer it right? Yes, yeah. yes. And yeah. sometimes somebody asks the same question yes. that I did earlier. So Phyllis. We're good. Yeah, Phyllis knocked me out, but somebody else asked. But the same you got question. the questions but answered. We got it. Yeah. That's during our Ask Us Anything yes. on Sunday night. Yes. We so oh, we solved that every Sunday night. I never miss it. Uh. Oh, my goodness. And, and now that you are seasoned <laughs> four month. How's it going? Well, well we I hate to ask this question, question every gonna... Sunday. We don't have to do that anymore. We <laughs> yeah. Read some YouTube things and understand what's going on. But we, there's always something like little things that you don't even think about when you're, you know, we didn't have any experience camping or, yeah. you know, and we camping. didn't know anyone. And little things like you, you can't run the coffee maker or the microwave while you have the air conditioning on. Because it's too much strain. Yeah, yeah. On, but we on didn't you. know yeah. that. Well, we did, well, thank heavens I'd read that. Yeah. I did read everything I could read. But you know, this is how you learn. Yes. Yeah. Just like when you first get a house, all these things. Yeah. And you've now gotten through and victory over all these things. So I want to turn this around. <laughs> Is it still a disaster? No. Are you having fun? Yes. But would yeah. you recommend this to others? Definitely. Yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. But, but I think what you have to realize, <laughs> if you haven't done it before, some people grew up camping, uh, we didn't. Uh, if it's you're not that. handy, which yeah. we're not, we, tell, we say to other people we're incompetent, mechanically <laughs> incompetent. That's not totally true, but, you know, uh, we're not handy. We still true. can't fix it ourselves. We'd still have to get someone to help us fix it, usually. Um, but at, at the same time, I think you need community and you need yeah. places to go to for expertise. And that's what I think is so good about RV Lifestyle. And driving down here, I told John, I don't know that I want to keep this more than a couple of years when we can get past COVID. 
but after being here in this people, group, yeah, the meetup yeah. has been wonderful. We learned so yeah. much. And people talking about, okay, yeah, I had problems in the beginning, etc. And 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 it came to pass. It's one of my favorite Bible verses, and it came to pass. Yeah. And uh, and I think that we're at that point that it's probably come to pass. Yeah. Uh, and we haven't had any mechanical problems other than driving through the cemetery, Natchez Cemetery, and hitting low-lying limbs. And we had to bar the ladder over here to see if we tore something off the top. Well, I knocked, I knocked off one of my antennas yes. in that same cemetery uh, earlier this year when I was there. Oh, so, yes. Okay. But, you know, uh, the thing that has struck me and why I really wanted to interview you guys like this for the podcast is how happy you are. <laughs> I mean, you seem really happy about this. Well, and, we are. And, and attitude is everything yeah and you know you read the videos and see the ads you'd think that this was nirvana and it's not no, it, it's it not. takes you know that every day can be a challenge well i remember you warning us about that and we didn't really understand when COVID first hit you said there's gonna be a lot of people that start this out and they buy an rv yes. and they think oh it's gonna be a lot of fun and no yeah. work and the market's and, gonna be flooded later they're gonna yeah sell. they're gonna they're gonna do and we were almost at that point a couple of times where we didn't think we could do it but now we think we can do it and other people are doing it everybody says they all have had problems and they've all had little difficulties they just work through it i think it strengthens your marriage to do that <laughs> it, one way or the other if not that it certainly will put yeah it does. and and uh, don't you think it, it's helpful to realize that you're not the only one that had yes. these issues yeah. And there's and, help everywhere. And I've always felt that we have to be much more open and honest about the challenges yes. that newbies face. Because if you've never camped before, you know, you've got dirt and dust coming in. And you've got snakes slithering around, you know. not I've never seen one, but I'm sure they do somewhere out there. Uh, well, you guys have been delightful uh, uh, to talk to. And I am, you, you can use your real name when you ask questions on Ask Us Anything. Well, no, it's my granddaughters have built That's my nickname, oh, your, your YouTube profile? Your profile is Jana. All right. Well, so. now I know Jana. And uh, you guys are veterans now. You <laughs> give us some advice for other newbies who are out there and well, probably where you were a few months ago. I'll take your advice, which one thing you said, before you go out and buy an RV, go rent one for oh. a week, just try it. And we, I we wouldn't argued have done about that. that. <laughs> you know, I said, let's do it. Mike says, let's do it. Yeah. And uh, we should have done that. And I would recommend that to somebody because you, you're gonna encounter difficulty, but then you've you caught, got somebody you can help, or if you only go on a short trip, you can always drive it back to the dealership or the. the yep. repair See, company. I disagree with that. If we had rented first, we never. You would never would have done. Because <laughs> we would have. You might be right. I think yeah. you might be right. Yeah, we would have uh, missed out. Yeah. But that is a really important thing because it is not a lifestyle for everyone. Well, that's true. Uh -huh. yeah. My advice would be, um, you know, <laughs> that you need to take advantage of everything that's available on the internet and in, in people like RV Lifestyle where there's all kinds of information. And, and that makes get together with other RVers yes, too. Yes, yes. That's, and that's we true. hadn't done that. This is our, well we occasionally here and there you know would talk to people. Mm -hmm. Everywhere we go we say something about RV Lifestyle and everywhere we go that we stop people have said I listen to Mike every oh, Sunday night. <laughs> Mike and Jen and Bo, that's yes. it. Yeah. Uh, every time we see someone walking a dog, we say, do you know Bo? Uh -huh. And they go, yeah, you must watch RV Lifestyle. Well, Bo is still chewing on your little gift that you gave Bo. They gave Bo a great gift of a little plastic ring with, uh, with chicken, chicken flavor. flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I smelt that all last night, every, <laughs> every night he was chewing on it. Sorry about that. Well, um, God bless you guys. Thank you for sharing honestly that. But, but let's make sure everybody hears this, that you, this is for you now. You like this yeah. lifestyle. Oh, yes. We're in. We're just planning where we want to go. We want to go all We want to go from Maine to almost California to the Glacier National yeah. and to the major uh, national parks out west. And we're thinking, oh, what can, well, when do we have, why do we have to wait for a winter? Can we go somewhere this winter and not yeah. freeze, or, freeze the pipes and yeah. burst the pipes? Our next thing we have to learn is how to winterize and dewinterize. It's pretty simple. Yeah, well, so I'm beginning simple. to think that. Yep. God bless you guys. Thank you for <laughs> for being so open and honest. Well, thank you for all the hard work you do. I don't want yes. you to work so hard that you get stressed out about working too hard. But yeah, you we seem think to have you work too, too hard. But John yeah. will say, Mike has sent something out At again. At 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> there are days <laughs> that it gets a little much. But, thank uh, you. What a, what a delight to meet you guys. 
what a delightful story of how you persevere and you get through this and now they're seasoned RVers and probably be some new challenges along the road and they're going to be able to help other people. Yeah, so other newbies are going to learn from these former newbies and maybe they won't have the total disaster, but you will have some problems and setbacks. Mm -hmm. We all do. And John and Joanne, just a great example of you make the best out of everything and you try and learn from your mistakes and they did. And we thank them for being a part of it. Do you have somebody, or maybe you have a story that, that we, should, uh, we should profile in one of our interviews? Just send us an email, Mike and Jen at rvlifestyle.com. Tell us uh, what your story is, and we'll get back in touch with you. We love learning from each other, and uh, the interview of the week is a great place to do that. When we come back, the news of the week. Stay with us. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborne batteries. Battleborne batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And battleborne batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And it'll probably be the same on your rig, too. Battleborne battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborne batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. Have you had it with overbooked, overcrowded campgrounds? Then check out Harvest Hosts, where RVers can overnight for free at more than 2,400 wineries, farms, microbreweries, golf courses, and attractions. Harvest Host is a membership service for those with self-contained RVs looking for unique, beautiful, and peaceful overnight camping experiences across North America. When you become a member of Harvest Host, you can camp for free at all these places. Jennifer and I are Harvest Host members, and we've made so many great memories at Harvest Host locations. There's no charge for camping, and your Harvest Host membership fee is easily made up with just a couple of stays. Plus, you have awesome places to stay. If you use our special affiliate link of rvlifestyle.com slash HH, you'll automatically get 15% off the cost of your membership. That's 15% off. But you must use the special link, rvlifestyle.com slash hh. Welcome back. And now it's time for the news of the week. And we are each going to take a story that interests us and caught our attention and tell you about it. All right. How about you go first? All what caught right. your attention? I would love to go first. Elkhart, Indiana from bus to boom. We all know that. Everybody's out there buying RVs, don't we? Yeah. So the story that caught my eye this past week was all over every major news outlet, from the Wall Street Journal to network TV to big and small newspapers. And it had to do with the RV capital of the world, Elkhart, Indiana, where more RV manufacturers are located than anywhere else. And the story talks about how in Elkhart, there's just such a demand that people, rather than going to college, are going to work in the manufacturing plants because they can get better benefits, more money, more job security. Immediately, right? Immediately. So skipping college and going to work and getting money, making what? As much as some people making as much as like 75000 a year. And those are production jobs? Right. That, that's pretty good. And uh, they're having to recruit workers from other areas. Yeah. There just aren't enough people in that area to supply the demand for people to work. I mean, you go to Elkhart, there's signs all over the place that they need people to work. I think I saw a story, one of those stories that you talked about, that said that they have 35,000 people commuting into the Elkhart area every day to work in the RV factories, and they still can't get enough. That's how crazy the RV industry is. So if you're looking for a job, Elkhart would be a good place to go to get a job. And then, of course, once you need all those people, then you need housing and all the things that go with that. Yeah, it's... Uh, people yeah. moving in. It's, it's pretty good. Um, one of those stories said that Elkhart is the largest among 403 metro areas in terms of having a jobs rebound. In other words, 
more more jobs were suddenly added in Elkhart than than 403 other communities in the U.S. It was right at the top of the list, and that's a direct uh, because of the demand for RVs. And aren't they building all of all the factories are expanding down there too and building new new plants? So. They are. It's it growing like crazy. Yeah. Well, that was uh, that was, a, and all you have to do is visit Elkhart, and you can see that. The story that caught my eye uh, had to do with our favorite place in all of America, which is Michigan's Upper Peninsula up here. See that little part of my finger there? Okay, <laughs> this is Michigan, you know. My thumb on the upper part, not this part. This is the Lower Peninsula thumb. This is the Upper Peninsula thumb. Well, that little thumb, that, there we go, that juts out into, uh, into Lake Superior is called uh, the Keweenaw Peninsula. Mm -hmm. And it is probably the most remote, uh, certainly the northernmost part of Michigan. And uh, there was a plan that was announced this week by some government officials that would create a 32,500 acre recreational park there. I hope that happens. Well, it, it was really neat. They, they call it the Keweenaw Heartlands Collaborative Park. And that's a big name for a park, right? But it's, uh, it's an elaborate plan that has a series of campgrounds, developed campgrounds scattered throughout this whole big area, as well as uh, hike-in primitive campgrounds. And all of them would be connected by a network of hiking trails, uh, biking trails. Keweenaw is real big for mountain biking. Um, for snowshoeing, for cross-country skiing, for off-road vehicles, for snowmobile trails, for horseback trails. Pretty neat. And the good thing is, up there in the Keweenaw Peninsula, normally they get about 17 feet of snow every winter, so you should be able to enjoy snow and winter <laughs> activities. You can get through it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what was the most snow they ever had one winter? Well, Calumet, right in the in the heart of the Cuban Ops. And so once got, I think it was in, back in the late 70s, one season, they got over 30 feet of snow. It fell 30 feet, <laughs> three stories of snow. But it is a gorgeous area. They know how to deal with snow up there. And uh, of those RV uh, sites that they wanted, they've been developed like 450 camping sites. Mm -hmm. They want to have a number of them be uh, all year round. So they're, they're, you can use them in the wintertime. They'll, they'll, they'll uh, plow them out. And we love winter camping. So as soon as that happens, if this plan goes through, we'll be up there. And the Keweenaw Peninsula, the mining days are long gone. I mean, the name Copper Harbor, it's, it's gone now. So they need, they need industry. They need, or I should say, people industry. They need people to come tourism yep. because the mining days are over. It used to be called Copper Country and the, the city at the very end, Copper Harbor, as Jennifer said. Uh, the, you can tour those mines, but they're all closed. So... Uh, camping will be a big, big thing. Now, right now, this is a pipe dream. It was proposed by the township supervisor up there, and it's gotten a lot of interest. Uh, so the the community has to want it, and then they got to figure out how to way to a way to spend it. But uh, uh, the fact that they're talking about it uh, is is pretty exciting. So we'll, I think so. Yeah, me too. All right, that's our news of the week. And we'll put links to these stories if you want to learn more about them in the uh, show notes, which you find at rvlifestyle.com and uh, also in the description below. Uh, let's turn now to the RV questions of the week. And we have three of them that we want to try. Um, how about if you do first one, I'll do the second, and we'll toss we'll, at me. do the second and third one. There we go. Okay, from David Gregory. How did you get the electric bikes to fit into the garage. We also have a Wonder Rear Twin Bed with two electric bikes, but cannot get both of the bikes in to fit into the garage. Well, I just did a video. We started a TikTok channel uh, over the weekend. Everybody said you gotta go on TikTok, so I did. I even danced. <laughs> and I hashtagged it, Grandpas of TikTok. You know, TikTok is for all these kids, but, but anyway, TikTok's kind of a fun little platform, so I, I put together a video that shows just that. Uh, David's talking about, um, I mentioned on a couple of our live streams that we uh, have two foldable electric bikes that uh, we have been using. And one of the draws is that I can actually fold these two bikes up and get them in the garage 
of our wonder. Now the wonder rear twin bed model has this massive garage and um, we have two rad power bikes, full size bikes. I can't get them in there at all. If I took them completely apart, I suppose I could, but that, I, then I'd have to put them back together. <laughs> but uh, we are actually able to fold these two bikes up and to get them on this slide out tray. It's made for bicycles, but we got both of them on and uh, are able now to travel with these, with these bikes. So uh, the way I got them in is wheels first, you know, the two bikes, wheels first, and there's this tray in the Wonder that slides out and so you, you slide it out, put the first one at the back of that tray, and have the wheels just kind of go over the, the lip of the, of the, a little bit. This is the front end of the bike. The front end of the bike, go over the, the, uh, the end of that lip, and then put the other one behind it, and then you can slide the tray right in, shut the doors, and you've got two electric bikes, and still room for lots more stuff. So, um, so that's, uh, that's how we did it, and if you want to see the video, you can follow us on TikTok. <laughs> it sounds so funny. And it's uh, RV Lifestyle Mike on TikTok. And I will put a, uh, for those of you who watch the video version of the podcast, we'll embed that version in as I was talking about. And you can see it there. And for those of you who listen to the audio version, go to the show notes at rvlifestyle.com and we'll put a link to the video in so you can all see it. And you can all stand by in about uh, two, three weeks. I'll have a whole video on these electric bikes and how we had fun with them. All right, this one comes from Steve. And, uh, and it's kind of a related question because he sees the RV we have, which is the Leisure Travel Vans Wonder Rear Twin Bed. And he says, I notice that you don't tow another vehicle behind your motorhome. Do you miss having one? She's not in your <laughs> <laughs> We have never towed a vehicle, ever. There are times when I would love to have a car. Yeah. So, like when you're working... And I'd like to. I'm working inside the inside RV, the the RV picnic table, and you know, I'd like to go explore. Or, yeah, and and what happens is then if she does, uh, and I still have to work, I have to sit in the parking lot and work in the RV. True. And uh, um, it's so much easier you know, not to have to unhook. Now, as much as we love that garage on the Wonder, because we can take our folding e-bikes. We can't tow a car with that wonder, even a small little car. The, the, the hitch isn't strong enough, and it doesn't. It will not allow you enough weight to tow because you use so much of that space, uh, and so much of it is, is occupied by the stuff you carry in that big garage. So it doesn't have the capacity to tow like a Sprinter would. A Sprinter can tow up to five, six, seven thousand pounds, depending on how it's set up. So. That's the downsides. Yes, uh, we, we, we do miss towing a car because I think we probably would do so now uh, just so we, because we're getting lazier. <laughs> you know, <laughs> then we don't have to unhook. It's not hard to unhook. We've never had a problem in 10 years, but you, know, you always need something new. So maybe we're thinking about that, right? Right. Okay, last question. This is from Bob Gartner. And, uh, All right, you handed me this one. On your black tank video, you mentioned that to fill up the black tank with water before dumping. If I use a water supply from a campground, how do I know how much water to put in without causing a mess inside? That's a good question. We are getting the Unity MB, MB in December or January. We live in the Philadelphia area. I am a member and enjoy watching your uh, Sunday Ask Us Anything videos. Oh, so well. how do you not put too much water in? It's, it's pretty simple. Uh, all of the the units that we've seen, the commodes, the toilets in an RV, when they are filled, a little red light comes on and they won't flush anymore. That's the way it is with our wonder. But but you don't even have to be that precise. Just make sure you put, and there's, you all have a meter on your, on your gas that shows you how full the black tank is. So just look at that and then if it's 25% full, know that you want to put a lot more water in it. Um, and it's not rocket science. You don't have to have exactly 100% or 92%, but you want to have, if you can, get it three quarters filled with water, with liquid. Just fill it up. And then when you empty it, it just empties it out much better. But there's no, you, you know, uh, on the Unity, you'll have a thing on your wall that will show you uh, what percentage it is filled and just, you know, fill it up. Uh, on the Wonder we have, and on many other RVs, the sink 
in the in the bathroom goes into the black tank, not necessarily the gray tank. So you can put a lot of water in that way if you're hooked, you know, before you you dump your water, if you're hooked up to city water, just let, run that tap, put a bunch of water in, flush it a bunch of times, and then uh, turn it off, and then empty it. You learn something new every day. I didn't realize the sink in the bathroom yes. emptied into the uh, Now, I kind of wonder. I don't know if it's like that on the Unity model, but you can find out. Uh, either way, the best way is you just keep flushing it until you got a lot of water in there. I can see why he's a little nervous. You know, yeah. he doesn't want this to back up on him. Well, you can also, when you flush it, you can look down there, you know, with a flashlight, and you can see, can you see water, <laughs> you know? And Well, that yeah. you could have spared it. All those words would just get a flashlight. <laughs> well, I suppose. Yeah, I, I just, suppose. Teasing. just teasing. All right. Hey, if you have a question, we'll do our best to answer it. Uh, here, the address is just Mike and Jen at rvlifestyle.com and you can take your smartphone and you can record a, a selfie asking that question and we're happy to answer it that way too. <laughs> All right, now it's time to move on to our favorite segment of uh, the show, I think, and that is the hidden campground gems from our friend Mark Kep. Where are we going? We're going week? out to California. All right, Mark, how you doing? Thanks for being there today. Thank you, Mike and Jen. Today, we're going to go to the state of California. I know some people groan, but a lot of people are in California, and there's some amazing camping spots out in California. And the one I'm going to show you is actually located, get this, it's located on the Pacific Ocean. In fact, there are campsites that back up to the beach, yet it's a hidden gem. Why is that? Well, it's located near the town of Lompoc. So Lompoc is central California. I'll zoom out here. It's between Los Angeles and San Francisco, central California, north of uh, Santa Barbara, south of, of Pismo Beach and San Luis Obispo. And it's located off of uh, California Highway 1, which is the scenic route uh, going through there. The this, this city of Lompoc is kind of unknown. It's near Vandenberg Air Force Base. This whole region from Gaviota up to Vandenberg is basically a private property there's nothing here and the campground I'm taking you to is called Halima Beach County Park I always mess it up so I pause there Halima so Silent H uh, Beach County Park it's run by uh, Santa Barbara County um, Parks and the location I'll zoom in here so we can see the map because it's actually kind of key on this one is literally located on the beach right there on the beach Halima Beach Road and there's one road that comes into it Halima Road and that comes off of the one over here be, um, just south of Lompoc. The road itself is a windy two-lane road. It's got some steep grades on it. Um, people do take large RVs out to this campground, but do know it is a bit of a, a sketchy trip to get there. The campground itself, we do have a video. That I, I'll just leave it at that thumbnail. That's the campground. Epic, right? Just absolutely unbelievable location. There are sites that are terraced up on the hillside. There are sites down on the beach you have direct access to the ocean and the sweeping views around you in insanely quiet nights. There's a railroad track that runs right behind it. So you'll see like the Amtrak train come through occasionally. County Park, again, this is popular with people that are in the local area, but it's still a hidden gem because most people from outside the region are unaware of this campground. This is the final drop into the campground itself. As you can see, there is a significant eleva elevation gain and loss along the roadway. You can see some of these sites backing into this view. Just an absolutely stunning location. This is a pure hidden gem because, if, again, if you're not from this area, you don't know this place exists. And if you are from this area, you are now swearing at me because how dare you share this with everybody, Mark? It's, uh, it's our hidden gem. Here's an example of a site where you're literally backed onto beach sand right there at the ocean. So Halima Beach County Park Campground outside of Lompoc it is a County of Santa Barbara run campground, and it is an absolutely pure hidden gem for you to go find out and enjoy. There will be a link to this page down in the description below. And if you've been to this campground, feel free to comment below about how beautiful it was. And then also, um, if you think I've blown it for you all, you can add that on there too. But that's our job is to share these hidden gems with all these other campers out there watching Mike and Jen's show. Back to you. There you go. Another hidden campground gem. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Mark's site, campgroundviews.com, lets you look at all of those uh, campgrounds. You can actually book. It makes it so easy, just a couple of clicks. Um, we'll put a link in the description and uh, in the show notes at rvlifestyle.com 
to that specific campground, that uh, Jalama Beach campground. You can find it. Just follow that link and it'll take you right to it. And with that, episode 369 is all over. Stay warm, everybody. <laughs> and don't forget to winterize, if need be, and uh, happy trails. <laughs>